Section 5 of the Journal of the Reverend Francis Asbury, Volume 1. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Sandra Robinson. Journal of the Reverend Francis Asbury, Volume 1, Section 5. Tuesday, 17. This morning I found some peace and life in my soul, but want more retirement. My desire is to be ever before the Lord. Many people attended the preaching, both in the forenoon and in the evening, when the congregation was much affected. The next morning I went to friend S.'s, and found his family well. Here we had Dr. Warfold and several polite people to dine with us. I spoke to the ladies about headdresses, but the doctor vindicated them, observing that religion did not consist in dress. I quoted the words of St. Peter. I stayed about an hour and then departed. We then rode to friend D.'s, and spent some time with his family. Thursday, 19. Friend D. and I set off for Frederica. We came to G.S.'s where I expected to have preached, but there was a disappointment, so we pursued our way, though my little horse was unwell and very weary. A poor unhappy man abused me much on the road. He cursed, swore, and threw stones at me. But I found it my duty to talk to him and show him his danger. Frederica is a neat little town, having one main street and three cross streets. It contains about a thousand houses, and the inhabitants are chiefly Germans. There are two German churches, one Calvinist and one Lutheran. There is also one English church and one Roman chapel. Many people came to hear me in this town. Friday, 20. Found some peace of mind in the morning, but was thoroughly buffeted by Satan in the course of the day. I had but few people in the evening, and but little power. Saturday, 21. My mind was greatly depressed, not on account of any outward known sin, but partly from the state of my body, and partly from a deep sense of the great work in which I am employed. I do not know when I sunk into deeper distress, though thank God there was no condemnation. Lord's Day After preaching in the morning, Brother J. H., Friend B., and myself set off to a place where I had to preach at two o'clock. Friend B. was awakened by the instrumentality of Friend S., and he told me that he had been much opposed. I heard him give an exhortation greatly to the purpose, and gave him a note of recommendation to do all the good he could. Happened in the company of an old stupid Quaker woman, who supposed me to be half Quaker, and thought the friends were the only people in the world, and that they were not fallen from their former lively and spiritual state. A man came twenty miles for me to go and preach a funeral sermon. I accordingly complied, and had many people to hear me. Then went about two miles to preach at Mr. D.'s, and met with the German minister, Mr. Benedict Swope, who heard me preach at both places. We had some conversation about the ordinances administered by Mr. S. He advanced some reasons to urge the necessity of them, and said Mr. W. did not do well to hinder us from the administration of them. I told him they did not appear to me as essential to salvation. Thursday, 24. Preached at Winchester in an unfinished house, and while the rain beat in upon me, many people looked and wondered at the stranger. However, I delivered my message with some energy, and then rode three miles to Richard Owings, where the Lord enabled me to preach with much feeling to a great number of people. Wednesday, 25. We rode about twenty miles to my old friend Joshua Owings, the forest home of the Methodists at that time, and found a very agreeable house and family. The old man is, quote, an Israelite indeed, end quote. He was once a serious churchman, who sought for the truth, and now God has revealed it to him. The Lord has also begun to bless his family. He has one son a preacher, and the rest of his children are very thoughtful. Though it was a rainy day, there were many people, and my heart was greatly enlarged towards them in preaching. Thursday, 26. The congregation was also large at Mr. Samuel Merriman's, and the Lord was with me. But on Friday at Mr. E.'s the congregation was small, and I was much straitened. The same evening I rode to Baltimore. Saturday, 28. Preached at the point the first time. Lord's Day, 29. It was a rainy day, but I rode to the point, and after preaching to a large congregation, returned to town and dined at W.M.'s. I preached in town both at three and at six o'clock. Monday, November 30. Rode in company with Mrs. Rachel Hullings, Mrs. R., and the widow W. to Nathaniel Perrigs, and preached to a large number of people. Then I rode to William Lynch's, to whom I was introduced by Mrs. H., and had many to hear the word of truth. The next day at Joppa there were many people from the country, and some from the town. Thursday, December 3. Preached at James Presbury's to many people who could feel the word and with much power in my own soul. Then rode three miles into the neck, and had a solemn, heart-affecting time while preaching from Revelations 2.11 a passage which, it seems, just suited their case. Afterward returned to J.P.'s. Friday 4. 
After preaching, Joseph Dallam conducted me to his house and treated me with great kindness. Preached at his house at three o'clock and on Saturday at M.B.'s, about three miles off. Lord's Day 6. Went about five miles to preach in our first preaching house. The house had no window or doors. The weather was very cold, so that my heart pitied the people when I saw them so exposed. Putting a handkerchief over my head, I preached, and after an hour's intermission, the people waiting all the time in the cold, I preached again. Monday 7. J.K. and I went about five miles to lodge, and the next morning set off for Bohemia. We passed through Charlestown, and dined at the head of the Elk. We lodged at R.T.'s, where I spoke closely to the poor Negroes, who took some notice of what was said. Since I went from here last, my travels have been perhaps as much as three hundred miles in about six weeks, and, glory to God, I have been favored with the presence of the Lord and with zeal and power in my public exercises. Rode to B.'s Tavern for my trunk and box of books, and received a letter from Mr. P., which surpassed everything I ever had met with from a Methodist preacher. The Lord judge between him and me. Then I went to S.H.'s, and after preaching to a few people, I spoke to them, one by one, concerning the state of their souls. Tuesday 8. I had intended to preach at Georgetown, but in my way found a large house belonging to a certain Mr. B., in which Mr. Whitefield had preached some years ago to some Hollanders who were eminent for religion. But the old people are now dead. Then I proceeded on my way to Georgetown, and lodged at the house of a Quaker. He treated me with great kindness, and appeared to be an understanding man. His wife was somewhat tender in religious conversation. In the evening the Negroes were collected, and I spoke to them in exhortation. In the morning three or four white people also attended a prayer, to whom I spoke about their souls. The friend went with me in the morning, and when I asked him what satisfaction he required, he told me no more than what he had received. Wednesday 9. I preached to many people, rich and poor, at J.R.'s, and at another place in the evening. Friday 11. Went twelve miles into Kent County, and had many great people to hear me. But before preaching, one Mr. R., a church minister, came to me and desired to know who I was, and whether I was licensed. I told him who I was. He spoke great swelling words, and told me he had authority over the people, and was charged with the care of their souls. He also told me that I could not, and should not, preach, and if I did, he would proceed against me according to law. I let him know that I came to preach, and preach I would, and further asked him if he had authority to bind the consciousnesses of the people, or if he was a justice of the peace, and told him I thought he had nothing to do with me. He charged me with making a schism. I told him that I did not draw the people from the church, and asked him if his church was then open. He told me that I hindered people from their work, and I asked him if fairs and horse races did not hinder them, and further told him that I came to help him. He said he had not hired me for an assistant, and did not want my help. I told him if there were no swearers or other sinners, he was sufficient. But, he said, what did you come for? I replied to turn sinners to God. He said, cannot I do that as well as you? I told him that I had authority from God. He then laughed at me, and said, you are a fine fellow indeed. I told him I did not do this to invalidate his authority, and also gave him to understand that I did not wish to dispute with him. But he said he had business with me, and came into the house in a great rage. I began to preach, and urged people to repent, and turn from all their transgressions so iniquity would not prove their ruin. After preaching, the parson went out and told the people they did wrong in coming to hear me, and said I spoke against learning, whereas I only spoke to this purpose. When a man turned from all sin, he would adorn every character in life, both in church and state. I left him, and preached at John R.'s at seven o'clock. Lord's Day 13. Preached twice with very little intermission to many people collected at a schoolhouse near our tees, and then rode to S.H.'s and found a comfortable time while preaching at six o'clock. On Monday I rode to Newcastle and preached to a large company. My soul has lately been much bowed down. Tuesday 15. There were but few people attended preaching at Mr. S.'s, and as the next day was wet, I stayed and had a family meeting. On Thursday I went to Mr. T.'s. My mind has been much affected lately. May the Lord support and teach me. After preaching at Mr. T.'s, I went to hear a new light minister, and found but little satisfaction. Lord's Day 20. Though it rained much, yet many people attended preaching at I.H.'s. Then I preached at a place about five miles off, and rode thence to Newcastle, 
where many people attended at night. The Lord favored me. My mind is now full of divine peace. Monday 21 I set out for Bohemia, and though my body was much fatigued with my ride, and my head ached violently, yet in the evening I enforced these words, quote, Be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace, without spot and blameless, end quote, and endeavor to show them that in justification we have peace, in sanctification we are without spot, and in perfect love we are blameless, and then proceeded to show them wherein we must be diligent. Tuesday 22 on my way to Susquehanna, a person came for me to visit Mrs. T. in a dropsy. I then proceeded to J.D.'s, and the next day set off for J.P.'s to attend our quarterly meeting. Many people attended, and several friends came many miles. I preached from Acts twenty twenty eight, quote, Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves, end quote, etc. After showing to whom the charge was given, I proceeded to enforce the subject thus. 1. Take heed to your spirits. 2. Take heed to your practice. 3. Take heed to your doctrine. 4. Take heed to the flock. 4. 1. Those that are under deep conviction. 4. 2. Those that are true believers. 4. 3. Those that are sorely tempted. 4. 4. Those that are groaning for full redemption. 4. 5. Those that have backslidden. I then urged the motives to this duty. We afterward proceeded to our temporal business and considered the following propositions. 1. What are our collections? We found them sufficient to defray our expenses. 2. How are the preachers stationed? Brother S. and Brother O. in Frederick County, Brother K., Brother W., and I. R. on the other side of the bay, and myself in Baltimore. 3. Shall we be strict in our society meetings and not admit strangers? Agreed. 4. Shall we drop preaching in the daytime through the week? not agreed to. 5. Will the people be contented without our administering the sacrament? J. K. was neutral. Brother S. pleaded much for the ordinances, and so did the people who appeared to be much biased by him. I told them I would not agree to it at that time, and insisted on our abiding by our rules. But Mr. B. had given them their way at the quarterly meeting held here before, and I was obliged to connive at some things for the sake of peace. 6. Shall we make collections weekly to pay the preacher's board and expenses? This was not agreed to. We then inquired into the moral character of the preachers and exhorters. Only one exhorter was found anyway doubtful, and we have great hopes of him. Brother S. received eight pounds quarterage, Brother K. and myself six pounds each. Great love subsisted among us in the meeting, and we parted in peace. I then went to Joseph Dallam's, and on Christmas Day attended the church, and heard Parson West preach a plain, useful sermon which contained much truth and afterward received the sacrament. Then rode five miles to Bush, but as Mr. S. did not give public notice, few people attended, and the preaching was late. The next day I rode to B.P.'s, where we had a large congregation and a very comfortable meeting. On the same day at the house of H.W., Nicholas Waters spoke with great care, but with little depth. He may improve, and make a useful preacher in time. Lord's Day 27 rode to the widow Bonds, and preached twice with very little intermission to a great number of people. According to a meeting in the evening, I had an opportunity of hearing Isaac Rawling exhort. His exhortation was coarse and loud enough, though with some depth. I gave him a little advice, which he seemed willing to take. Monday 28. Many people of various kinds attended at A.S.'s, preached afterward at I.M.'s in the evening, and went thence to I.B.'s, and met the class. Tuesday, 29. At Mr. S.'s I found great peace of mind, and, thanks be to God, had power in preaching, though the people were dead and stupid. The next day at Mr. S.'s I had many people and preached with freedom, then went to G.'s, where we had great consolation. January 1, 1773. My body has been weak for some time, but my mind has enjoyed a good degree of peace, and I have a strong desire to be kept in the meekness of Jesus Christ. My heart has been affected by reading lately part of Sewell's History of the Quakers. How great was the spirit of persecution in New England, when some were imprisoned, some had their ears cut off, and some were hanged! Oh, that our God would arise and bow the nations to himself! January 2 After preaching to several people at J.M.'s, a new place, I then rode back to Mr. C.'s and preached in the evening. January 3 Rode to Baltimore and had a large congregation at the house of Captain Patton at the Point. 
Many of the principal people were there, and the Lord enabled me to speak with power. At night I preached in town. The house was well filled with people, and we have a comfortable hope the work of the Lord will revive in this place. Bless the Lord, O ye saints. Holiness is the element of my soul. My earnest prayer is that nothing contrary to holiness may live in me. Monday 4 Rode to SS's and was much affected in preaching to the people. I then met and regulated the class. Tuesday 5 They were kind enough to offer me the courthouse in town, but judging it unfit, I preached in another house and then met the society and settled a class of men. Wednesday 6 we had a pretty good gathering at N. Perrig's, about six miles from town. I then rode back to town, and after preaching with comfort in the evening, I formed a class of women. Thursday 7. Rose with a determination to live more to God. Preached twice in the country, met two classes, and settled them as well as I could. The class at Mr. S.'s were lively and had the power of God among them. They were the fruit of N.P.'s labors, and many of them could give a good account of their experience. Friday 8. My mind is fixed on God. I both desire and purpose to exercise fasting, prayer, and faith. After some exercise of mind, the Lord enabled me to preach with warmth at Mr. M's from these words, quote, Be not ye partakers with them. End quote. I showed, first, whom the words were spoken to, secondly, with whom they were not to be partakers, thirdly, how they were not to partake with them, namely, in spirit, in judgment, in practice. Lord's Day, January 10. Many people attended at J.P.'s to whom I preached twice with some life, and then went three miles into the neck, and felt much power while preaching on perfect love. The more I speak on this subject, the more my soul is filled and drawn out in love. This doctrine has a great tendency to prevent people from settling on their lees. Monday, 11. Preached with great plainness to many people at D.R.'s, and then rode to Mr. D.'s. Tuesday, 12. Rode to M.B.'s, but as they had no previous notice, we collected but few. However, I preached, and afterward returned to Mr. D.'s, and preached to his family. Thursday, 14. It was late before I reached S.L.'s, and as there was much rain and snow, the company was small. Young Dr. Andrews took me home with him. The young man and his sister and mother seemed tender, but his father appeared to be a stiff old man, and I did by no means like his spirit. Friday, 15. Many people attended preaching at SF's. I was shut up in speaking, and afterward rode home with friend P. Saturday, 16. This morning I rose to glorify God with the determination to do His will and that only, to be wholly devoted to the Lord in spirit, soul, and body. Many people came to hear the word of life today, though it was very cold. Lord's Day, 17. Preaching today at friend P's on the barren fig tree, I first showed that it was applicable to the Jews, and secondly to the Protestant Church, at the same time described the barren fig tree as one without leaves, or one without blossoms, or one without fruit, or one that did not bear so much fruit as another might bear. I then rode to Joseph Dallam's and preached to his family with a few others. On Monday but few people attended at B's, and in the evening I preached at Mr. D's and was shut up. The next day many country people came to hear the word at Joppa though but few came from the town. There are about forty houses in this town, and it stands on a neck of land near the water, but the people seem to be buried in trade, sensuality, and superstition. Wednesday 20. The weather being cold, there were but few at J.B.'s. Nevertheless, I preached. If Israel be not gathered, yet I hope to be the Lord's. Thursday 22. After preaching with liberty at Mr. C.'s, I went to A.G.'s and found life in preaching there. The next day at J.M.'s, I preached to a stupid company, and then rode to J.C.'s. I was favored with liberty in dispensing the blessed word in the evening at J. Owings. How pleasant and profitable it is to feel divine power in public exercises! Saturday I rode to Baltimore and had a large congregation. Lord's Day 24. I preached twice at the point and once in town. On Monday my heart felt great sorrow. This day I wrote to my mother, and in the evening found great consolation. End of section 5